Great. So uh, this fellowship has been not only like a crash course into sets of tools and technologies, but also new possibilities with which to approach our practice. And all of us, three of us come from completely different backgrounds. And each of us participated in the project, taking on specialized areas to make this prototype possible. So we started with a, with a let's start with an introduction, uh, like the structure and about our individual practices. And over to Diane to start with her work. Diane, you're on mute. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm a visual artist uh, working in um, installation, a moving image, a sculpture, um, etc. cetera. Um, I kind of, my work critically looks at technology um, and uh, society and culture and, and ecology. Um, here are some images of um, a recent installation I did. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to keep the time. Um, so, yes, I am um, very interested in working collaboratively. Um, and at the moment, actually also doing another collaborative um, residency. Um, so this has been a great um, experience for me. This is a piece of work I did in uh, last year. Um, and, yeah, so I work in code, but also in CGI um, technologies um, to create kind of virtual worlds, which then can be used um, as interactive artworks, but also um, moving image pieces. Um, and there's my last slide there. Um, I'm based in London um, and also um, I'm a Scottish artist based in London. And I am also part and co-founder of a um, an artist-run space called Gossamer Fog, um, where we showcase the work of artists that are critically looking at technology, science, and ecology. Um, so yeah, you can check out, we have a website if you're interested in that. Um, so I'll just move on to Shayek, if you want to talk a little bit about your work. Yep, sure. Thank you, Dan. Uh, hello, I'm Shayek Mohammad Arif. I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I started my career uh, 10 to 11 years back as a electronic music producer. And then uh, my main motive was to build some uh, interacting audiovisual performances. Uh, initially, uh, I mainly was motivated by the digital inspirations mainly, but then slowly, if I go next, I started uh, collected inspiration from the more organic sources like the site recordings, the Foley method recordings, and also uh, the recordings from the huge folklore uh, mine of our country, which is Bangladesh. So uh, then I started collecting uh, sounds from different uh, artists, different folk artists, different instrumentalists and different sources. And uh, I started blending the whole sound into another uh, form, which is 50% uh, digital and 50% acoustic or organic. So that's my motive. If we go next, then I can um, show some of the approach very quickly that uh, um, in this project, I have also used the uh, beautiful uncertainty of the software. Uh, I, I have used the granular synthesis system here where the machine uh, and the algorithm talks with each other and creates some um, uh, very uncertain form of sound, which is beautiful. This is also a form of generative sound production system, which is called VCV rack. So uh, in this project and all over, uh, my main intention to build sound um, uh, where sometime I am the initiator or sometime I'm just the spectator and the machine does the rest. Uh, this is a thing which I, uh, I have started developing for this project. Uh, it is in situ phase uh, where I have used touch designer to build some interacting idea with the thing, but uh, maybe later on it will get its full phase. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I think you're on mute. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Upasana, I'm a designer and animation director, uh, trained as a Bharatanatyam and dancer. I'm a partner and founder of two design studios uh, called Switch and Roy Studio. Uh, while we specialize in design, art, and animation films in Switch, my practice has always been about uh, multiplicity and finding a sense of identity and purpose and working with 
uh, a lot of indigenous uh, culture and uh, knowledge bases. Um, so we host sessions at our studio where we invite speakers to create uh, and show us how they do what they do in workshop style interactive sessions, which we call Half Dry. And Little Switch is an extension of Switch where we experiment with workshops for children and working with extremely low tech uh, stuff, which we find every day around us. Uh, we specialize in telling stories and creating identities through motion design and animation. And we create uh, stuff for shows and films and also help brands communicate their authentic stories. Uh, so after graduating from the National Institute of Design, I continued to find ways to work on projects that could draw from my various practices. And I created short films which were showcased at various international film festivals. Uh, it also involves, my practice also involves creating uh, visual experiences uh, to reach wider audiences for traditional, classical, or fringe music or performance artists. The idea is to bring uh, music and performance and stories through them to audiences which otherwise would not be inclined to experiment or walk into that. Uh, one of the projects which brought uh, multiple influences together is the film which is showcased in the Indian Music Experience Museum in Bangalore, where we tell the story of Indian music using multiple animation styles and techniques through the story of a child and a mother. So do go there and have a look if you're in Bangalore. Um, so I'll go straight into our project. Uh, this project is, the question is why this project? So we are living in the Anthropocene. It's been like that for a while. Human beings, we've made our own ecosystem, which is completely separate from nature. Words like AI, uh, augmented intelligence, even are now daily language for many. And the possibility of a super intelligence seems imminent. So give me a sign is a prototype uh, for an interactive storytelling tool, which uses machine learning and hand gestures from ancient Indian practices to trigger urgent and important conversations of multiplicity, climate crisis, and the Anthropocene. Uh, so why this? So can I ask Diane to tell us why this? Yes, sure. Um, so yeah, we are the stories to tell ourselves. We, are, we create a world through these stories and the language and mediums we use to communicate these stories are of extreme importance. Um, this is a future language project that builds from indigenous wisdom and the way of living um, and the way of living and communicates using gesture and communication using gesture. Um, so traditional and folk art forms um, with geographies that they originate from, and um, they are intertwined and in celebration of nature and human condition within it. These indigenous knowledges, knowledge systems tell alternative stories and philosophies of our relations with each other and the natural world. It is critical to revisit them and to re-establish a philosophy of care and inclusiveness. Um, Shayak? Yes, uh, through globalization, many languages and cultures have been and are being lost. At least 43% of total languages estimated as being spoken across the world are on the brink of extinction. Linguistic AI technologies are being trained predominantly in English, adding to the all-encompassing anglicization of digital communication. Careful thought must be given to what we feed the machine as its intelligence grows to create a more inclusive infrastructure which doesn't homogenize societies. It is critical to imbibe multiplicity, multiculture, and care for the ecosystem, not only to avert our obsolescence, but also to hopefully create a truly democratized world. And now to Upashima. So give me a sign uh, sits between these two various uh, in interwoven conceptual threads of, uh, we have built the first draft of a prototype of, a, of the tool, uh, which takes deeper meanings associated with selected gestures or mudras from the Natya Shastra. So the juxtaposition and the choice of the mudras for this prototype has been made to trigger interest in alternative knowledge systems and turn attention to uh, urgent and important actions which we need to take to, related to climate change. So uh, while in dance forms like Bharatanatyam and Odyssey and many other traditional classical Indian dance forms, the gestures of mudras are associated with multiple and deeper meanings which are communicated uh, with the different movement of body and facial expression. So we chose these ones which are related to nature. 
So if you see that, if you experience it on the website as well, you will see the various elements of nature that it takes into consideration. Over to you, Diane. Okay, so we um, experimented with a teachable machine um, creating um, classes for six these six um, individual gestures um, and then matching them to just a title that we, then we would then use um, just a string like a title that then in P5JS we could use to trigger um, sound and uh, different aspects within um, to make an interactive um, storytelling tool. Um, so here is just an image of um, creating the different gestures, um, which um, I did myself, but then in this process learning that um, teachable machine isn't the best for a sort of gesture recognition tool, um, as in if different people are using gestures in their own home, the background will be different, the colours will be different, and so there was a bit of um, conversation about the best way to make this project work. Um, so yeah, I, I brought uh, the Teachable Machine model, our model into P5JS and started to trigger um, GIFs and sound um, that were supplied um, by Shayek and Absana, which we'll talk about later. Um, and this was a great experience for me to flex my um, JavaScript <laughs> muscles because I hadn't done it in a very long time. So um, yeah, it was, it was challenging, but quite interesting. Um, Absana? So one of the things that we needed to do is also, while we had this idea of a larger idea, but we wanted to also figure out what could we actually achieve within the space and time that we had. So we looked into, and the, we extracted a few relevant texts and we took in keywords first. So you can see on the left, it's very aggressive, but we did not want that kind of a conversation. Instead, we chose to place the entire quote on the artwork and uh, the development of the visual language was constrained by the possibility that we could trigger, of course, so we had to stick under 5 MB. So what I was, what I did is basically I shot the hands, I took it into After Effects and I worked on After Effects and triggered the text. And then I gave Diane the text formation as well as the hands in the transparency so that they could be played around with. The idea was to also draw, but that will be another version. Uh, so over to you, Ashaik, about the music. Yes, thank you. Uh, already I have described uh, the, my work strategy. So I have uh, collected in this project um, um, this infinite number of uh, inspiration from the audio inspiration from Dan and Upashuna. And then also I have recorded some and then I used it. Uh, mainly I have used uh, some uh, beautifully designed AI-based softwares and also which have some beautiful uncertainty. And thus the six soundscapes were built for the whole of sign. Uh, then if we go next, uh, so this project is uh, at the very early stage of development. We believe it has the potential to grow into quite a powerful piece of work. You can actually try out this prototype. It will probably work a little glitchy, but if you hold your hand close to the camera in the right mudra or gesture, it should work. Over to you, Diane. Yeah, so we've shared the P5JS link. Um, if you want, um, you know, you can try it out um, and hold up one of the six um, hand mudras and that will tr trigger the work, which will show a short video at the end of, of that in, in um, action. Um, and yeah, we also thought as a future development that we, to make it more of a robust kind of interactive artwork, we would ask, um, we would put an instructable, sort of explaining how you can add your own um, kind of code um, your own model, sorry, from the teachable machine to the P5JS code, and then um, also share your model with us to make our code more robust. Sorry, running out of time. Um, yeah, so the, the plan would, there's two sort of avenues where it could go forward. It could be an immersive art installation, or it could be a VR piece using hand tracking to make it a more um, robust kind of tool. Um, so I'll just show the video in the last uh, couple of minutes. So we can have a look at the piece in action, if it will work. Will that not work? Okay. One second. If I can just have... Gosh, okay. Give me a moment. Okay.
I think the audio is not uh, uh, shared. No oh, okay. Sorry. Um, well, I don't think we have time to fix the audio, but these are the, you can see the different actions um, happening there. Yeah, no, the audio is a really key point. So I'm very sorry that that's not connected, but you can watch the video on our blog post and it'd be fantastic. And hear the amazing soundscape that Shayak created, which kind of, um, you know, really adds to the, the piece. Um, and it was quite tricky to get everything to work in sync with the, the GIFs and the, the sound, but I feel that we managed to pull it all um, together in the end. Um, I don't know if, Absana and Shaik, you want to add anything else while this video is playing? Uh, I put in the, back the link to the to the blog on the chat, so if you want to have a look there, and we'll put the, put up the instructable there, so that you can train your own machine and try it out yourself. So it's going to be there as well. And Shaik. Yeah. So uh, thanks everyone for enjoying or uh, listening the or watching the whole idea. And I feel fine and blessed to have to such collaborator Dan and Upashana. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.